start the recording and I guess I'll do a countdown and we'll get started. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Welcome back to the Community Interviewnity. Whoops, I forgot to make this full screen. To the Community Interviewnity series, uh, where I take a member of the YouTube community and I interview Nity them. I, I, it's a stupid name. <laughs> it's a terrible name. Um, but uh, today we have a special guest. Who the fuck are you? My name is DZD. Um, I make random videos on the internet, mostly talking about old YouTube, uh, old internet, but also do gaming, um, sometimes animation reviews, just whatever kind of pops into my, my tiny little head. Nice, nice. Um, so, you know, this series, we, we do kind of, it is kind of like a way to open up the doors and like get to know different content creators and, you know, and, and YouTubers and stuff. I, I hate the word content creator. <laughs> it sounds so like marketed, you know, you, but yeah. YouTubers that like you may not know, um, at least, you know, you, you may see their videos and stuff, but you may not know much about them. So it is a, it's a fun way to get to do that. Uh, D's a, you know, good friend of mine and i invited him on for i think this is like the sixth one of these i've done now jesus um so we're just gonna run down some questions here go over them but before that i will put a link to dzd's channel in the description so run on over there and subscribe to him watch his stuff all right d are you ready to be uh questioned <laughs> are you ready to win, for, <laughs> to win for questioning <laughs> <laughs> all right question number one this is the one that i ask everybody how did you first get into content creation hmm. uh, i want to say like all the way back in 2012 um i would just like upload random videos but i don't know i never really started to work on anything really complex until i want to say 2015 2016 um, I remember it was the ABGN's anniversary, and since I was just such a big fan of, you know, classic YouTube and all those reviewers back then, I decided to make kind of a video talking about, you know, just like old school reviewers, but instead of just, you know, doing multiple uh, reviewers in one video, I just talked about one of my favorites at the time, or at that time, it was Armic21, you know, God rest his soul. Uh, he he was one of the first of those YouTubers I watched before even ABGN. So I decided, why not just do a video talking about him and you know what he did back then as a reviewer. And so that's kind of how my uh, my series started. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and my second question also kind of ties into this one. And this is a question that's uh, special to you because I, uh, you know, you. Most of the people that I've done these these interview episodes on, they do mainly like gaming content, and uh, the content you create is a little more special. I, I want to know what really like inspired your your style of content. There was a lot of different inspirations. Um, Rebel Taxi, aka Pan Pizza, he he's an animation YouTuber. He has a very distinct kind of you know way he makes his videos and how he edits them. Uh, Frederick uh, Knudsen, the uh, down rabbit hole guy. I think, mm. uh, he has this kind of documentary style with his videos that um, I definitely kind of I not necessarily ripped off, but was inspired by. Um, I don't know. I just, I kind of like very um, impartial sort of, um, you know, documentary style videos. Because I, I was a nerdy kid, I liked history. I liked, I liked watching, you know, PBS and uh, Learning Channel back when it actually had like good stuff on there. So I kind of just borrowed a lot of that, and I think that's was kind of my down or not downfall, but kind of one of the major flaws of my videos was because I was so kind of just dry and monotone. But eventually, I would kind of you know come out of my shell, and I would. You know, be a bit more vocal. I would add jokes, you know, sometimes at the expense of the person, sometimes just kind of just 
being silly, not trying to be, uh, you know, harsh or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think you do a good job with the with the humor. I know, um, I always liked just the the the. I don't know. It was kind of like more of a subtle humor, but the um the episode that I did on your channel with you, I liked the intro where you're just laying on the floor. <laughs> your character is just laying on the floor, and then you like you like answer the phone or whatever. I always thought that yeah. was a funny one. Um, speaking of which, I do want to. This isn't on my questions, but I do, I just thought of this. I do want to know where did your like avatar character come from like when was that created uh it's pretty complex um at the time you know my girlfriend kind of uh you know she uh i wouldn't say she's a furry but she likes like you know anthropomorphic characters so she kind of sort of designed this like this red dog character that i sort of just kind of use as like that that avatar because i don't know i thought it looked cute but then eventually i just made him like a like a human like he's this he's this like lost virtual boy character from like some game that was never released and so that's kind of the uh i guess the lore he's just kind of trapped in the internet now it's like you know source code and he's just wow. viewing that's, these random that's videos awesome. i don't that'd, know that'd be sick to like get like a like a homebrew virtual boy game made with that character. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't have to know how to do it, but I, that would that would be uh -huh. legit. Does it, does it have, like, a name? Does your character have a name? Or is it just DZ? Uh, I think it's just D. I didn't really, like, D. come up with anything, I guess, original, because it was just a shortening of um my old, old uh, username that I used back in the day. It was Dan Zig. So it was just mm. DZ. But yeah, I'd probably come up with an actual like you know name and you know lore if I actually had the uh, the know how to make games. Speaking of games, my next question relates to games. Obviously, I like games. I know that you like games. I want to ask you off the top of your head. You don't have to. This has to be like a finite answer. I I I just want to know what would you say your top five games are? Uh, let's see: Super Mario RPG, Earthbound, Mischief Makers, three. Um, Sonic Three, and oh, this is a tough one. Uh, I don't know. Let's Zelda: Link to the Past. Ah, oh, that was pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of basic, but you know. Eh. Uh, I wouldn't say. I mean, Mission Makers is definitely one that I don't think people would definitely, you know, a lot of people would have would, yeah, would, would have on their list. I mean. <laughs> But I mean, there's 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 nothing wrong with also including the classics. They're classics for a reason, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what my top five are. Probably like, uh, fuck, uh, Donkey Kong Country is definitely up there. Oh yeah, yeah. It's probably, it's probably Donkey Kong Country, Banjo Kazooie, um, No More Heroes, Sonic Two, and a fifth one that I can't think of right now. <laughs> Shit. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> for sure, yeah, it's um, I don't know. I feel like my list changes, like whatever temperament or mood I'm in. You know, if I'm feeling more, I guess, like in mood for something more energetic or action focused, I'll pick like an action game. Or if I'm kind of just like more methodical and just calm, it's so, like choose an RPG or something. What have, What have you been playing right now? But yeah, I, I just like games in general. It, it's it's like choosing from your uh, your favorite child, I guess. What yeah, what have kinda, you been playing know, recently? It, 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 hyperbolic, it, it, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh shit! Is my hold on? Hold on. I mean, am I okay? I'm back. Yeah. I, I my guess my audio. Discord I bumped up. my mic by accident, and I think it came undone, so I had to go in and fix it. My, my bad. <laughs> uh, okay. But I didn't yeah, say anything too cool. important during that time. I was uh, I was just gonna ask you um, the this isn't one of the questions, but I was just curious. What games have you been playing recently? What What have you been into? Uh, oh, um, a lot of a lot of different games. Um, this one just kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, Hi Fi Rush. It's like the oh. action game mixed with a uh, rhythm game elements. It's pretty good. I 
enjoy it a lot. Um, you know, I'm probably going to play through it again. Uh, but aside from that, let's see. I need still need to finish uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon. Uh, that game has just so much content. Um, hmm. Aside from that, I've been playing some tabletop games with my friends. Uh, mostly just D and D Fifth Edition. And uh, yeah, I've been emulating a lot of old games. Cool. I've I you know I've been wanting to play um, Hi Fi Rush, but I just uh, I don't know. It's just like I'm I'm not subscribed to Game Pass, or else I would just play it on there. Um, and I'm just I'm like, should I drop forty bucks and just buy it? <laughs> but like, is it forty bucks? That was thirty bucks. Thirty bucks. What it's. Okay, thirty. Yeah, bucks, but whatever it is. But like, it looks lot, yeah. it, it looks good though. How like how long did it take you to play through that game? I'm just curious, because like, um, it's kind of short. I would say it's like ten to twelve hours. Actually, no, I think it might be a bit shorter than that. But I don't know. It, it felt longer, maybe because I was just spacing it out. Like I, I wasn't just like you know marathoning it. It's not terrible but, though for like a for like yeah. a character action type game, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. It's not a bad length. So. Yeah, yeah. The game was so funny when they like first announced it because it was like by the creators of Evil Within and Ghostwire Tokyo. <laughs> that was uh-huh. the, something you didn't expect. I was like, whoa, what, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, okay, next question is, what's your favorite aspect of being a content creator? My favorite word. Uh, my favorite aspect of being a content creator would have to be just, I guess, the freedom of what I can do. You know, I just, outside of, you know, what I'm limited to say by YouTube, I can just kind of, you know, make up any, uh, you know, concept for a video and just do it. It's, long, it's just limited to my, I guess abilities or imagination yeah yeah it's a fun it's a fun aspect of creating videos who's kind of having that that freedom to to like put yourself into a video which i think you do very well by the way i don't think i've watched other creators that have the same style as you um so i really enjoy that too (laughs) (laughs) thanks um what other okay so we talked about video games obviously uh, but i don't want to just strictly talk about that because i know you enjoy other things so i want to know what are some other media that you enjoy maybe like non-video games uh i'm a big fan of movies um really just any genre not really big on horror i mean i i like it a bit more than i used to but mostly just you know action or drama of course comedy but I also, you know, like reading books. I haven't read much in a while, but, um, you know, I like uh, sci-fi. I think I mentioned in a stream. Um, I like Frank Herbert, you know, the guy who wrote Dune. Um, I also enjoy, you know, reading comics, uh, mostly manga, though. You know, I'm a bit of a weeb, I guess. And, uh, yeah, but aside from that, you know, I don't really watch a lot of TV like I used to, but, you know, I, I like, um, you know, certain types of, uh, I guess, like, comedy um, sitcoms and uh, mo- anything animated, really. I'm more of an animation guy. Oh, what's uh, what's your favorite, like, I guess, animated show? It could be, like, a cartoon, it could be an adult program, whatever it is. Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I would have to say, like in the last couple of years, I, I liked uh, the new Samurai Jack that came out. I like Primal. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the new Castlevania was pretty good. Oh yeah, like the the, the Netflix series. Yeah, yeah, that that was pretty. That was pretty sick. Pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh. Nice. Yeah, I, 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 cause like I, I knew you had like a, a soft spot for like, like manga and stuff too. I don't really read a lot of manga. I watch anime, but I don't really, you know, read a lot of manga. What, what would you recommend? Mm, let's see. Um, even though this, this one's unfinished, uh, 
Have you heard of Giver? Yes, I have heard of Giver. Yeah, that manga was really good. I remember reading that like back in high school or something. Yeah. Um let's see. Uh I know there's also the movie, but there's Ichi the Killer. Pretty good manga. It's really, really dark, really kind of depressing. It's it's one of those where it doesn't really have a happy ending. But, you know, sometimes it's good to kind of have, I guess, a little slice of reality. Not everything has to be, you know, you know fan, fantasy fulfillment. Uh, let's see. What other manga? I don't know if this counts as manga, but I've read a little bit of the um, the Mario, I guess, mangas that came out that they, you know, oh, like the, like the, the Japanese one, the Mario World era ones, right? Is that what it is? I don't I, remember. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I've read yeah. a uh, a couple of those back in the day, like just nice. legally scanned and translated online. <laughs> I actually, I had a friend who had like a compilation of like a bunch of those. It was pretty neat. Mm -hmm. I was able to read a yeah, lot of those. Those Nintendo manga, yeah, were really good, especially the Link to the Past Zelda one. Yeah, I've seen those. I have never read one of those, but I was like, I was, I always see them in like bookstores and stuff. I'm like, yeah. damn. Yeah. Um, I recently, because like, again, I haven't read a lot of manga, but I'm, I'm, I am interested, and uh, I like comics a lot. So I'm like, you know, why not read manga? So I uh, recently did pick up like the first, I guess volume of uh fist of the north star um, oh that's another good one yeah they had like a my my local bookstore had like a hardcover of the first volume and i was like it's like 10 bucks and i was like yeah i can't not buy that <laughs> so um i am gonna give that a try yeah the anime is really good i um i kind of watched a lot of that and uh, read a lot of jojo back in like the early to mid 2000s i was kind of in like my uh my edgy boy phase, my Ooh. oh modern day anime is like all moe little girl crap, and I was like, I don't know. We all had that phase, I feel. I'm st dude, I'm still in that phase. <laughs> where, <laughs> where I, like someone's like, "Have you watched this new anime?" I'm like, "No, I'm just rewatching Trigun." <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a new one that's out, and it's like, the Bash looks like a Zoomer. Like, okay. <laughs> This is not for me. <laughs> um, so, if you had unlimited time, unlimited resources, what would be your dream project? Ooh, actually, I was talking about this with my girlfriend a while back. If I had unlimited, I guess, you know, resources, and Nintendo wouldn't uh, absolutely murk me, I would make like an open world F Zero game, mm -hmm. kind of like a Western RPG, like a like a Fallout or um, Elder Scrolls, where you like pick a background, like you're a bounty hunter or like a or like a smuggler or something, and then you like uh, you make your character, you like pick like all these different you know alien races or a human, and then you like start off and like on one of the planets, and you can like just drive around in your uh, your racer and challenge people to races and like you know either be like the good guy or the bad guy all that kind of stuff <laughs> i know it sounds like really really dumb but no i mean that's, if i, I could find I think it's a great idea <laughs> honestly <laughs> i mean like i always love the cutscenes in gx and stuff like seeing like yes. the characters in the world and it's like why don't they do anything with that you know <laughs> it's like it's... i know <laughs> it's like there's so much wasted potential yeah, like 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 you have all these characters and all these fun designs and stuff, and I was like, you don't do anything. And then like whenever like Nintendo's asked, like, hey, what about F Zero? And it's like, well, we don't know what we would do with. I'm like, do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have a whole world of characters. <laughs> you can do something. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of an issue I had with Nintendo for a while is how just overly protective they are of their IPs, even though they don't do anything with them. Yeah, they just spit on them. Maybe, you know, and I, I honestly, I think some of that could be like, because I think they've tried I more specifically with like the Metroid Other M. And that was like a, a pie in the face moment for them, I think. So I, oh, yeah. maybe they're just scared to. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. 
Because that was them being like, like, okay, we'll do a cinematic Metroid. And then, like, and everybody was like, fuck this game. (laughs) They were like, well, yeah, okay. But I think they should give it another try, because they were like that during the 90s with the the live-action Mario movie. But, you know, now here they are trying again, so why not just give it another try? You know, what are your predictions for that movie? Because I think, I know, it looks good. I don't like Chris Pratt as Mario, because he's not playing Mario. Oh, me neither. He's he's yeah. playing Chris Pratt and like he was like he was even like I'm gonna do a voice and then in the trailers I'm like you're not doing a fucking voice <laughs> don't lie to me <laughs> yeah well thoughts on the movie but uh, you know aside from Chris Pratt I hope it's good it looks promising it doesn't look like your typical Illumination movie I I hope that Nintendo kind of like you know curated you know the writing and um. Just the overall feel of it. Like, I don't mind, you know, it doesn't need to be like a serious Mario movie. I don't mind jokes, you know, because it's Mario. But I just hope they treat the source material with respect. And it's not just like references to, you know, things that'll be outdated in like a year. Yeah. Like, I don't want to see Donkey Kong flossing or whatever (laughs) nonsense. Yeah, you don't want the emoji movie, right? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the animation looks really good so far i'm just i am also like i'm optimistic but like hesitant at the same time because i've been not not by them but like i i i remember whenever the ratchet and clank movie was coming out i was like oh this is gonna be like the best game movie gets but you know so far and then i went to the theater and i watched it and i was like this is garbage <laughs> i know it's the most generic <laughs> disney pixar nonsense i don't know if you know the story but um me and my buddy damon from frick and Freck, we went and saw that um when it came out and we went on like opening weekend granted we went on a sunday but still we were we had we, you know, we had jobs so we both had sunday off so we went that mm. sunday to go see it we went to our local theater went to the <laughs> went to the theater bought our tickets sat down and we were the only two people in there watching that movie. Mm-hmm. So we had the entire theater to ourselves watching Ratchet and Clank on like a Sunday afternoon. We were like, uh, that's not good. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard it did really bad. I didn't want to give them my money, so I, I never watched it because just looking at the trailer, it just felt so generic, you know? Like Ratchet didn't have that attitude. He wasn't like, you know, kind of a, a punk kind of a jerk he was just like generic oh i want to go out and see the world you know typical main character yeah and i yeah i was optimistic i mario i think is is at least going to turn out better than that but at the same time like part of me is like uh, it, it can suck <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah but uh i do want to say though my big prediction is that if it's successful the second movie is going to be in yoshi island i swear to god because they they've there's no Yoshis or anything yet, and I'm like, why is there Yoshis? And I'm like, oh, they're saving it for a sequel. They're gonna, they're gonna go to like Yoshi oh, yeah, Island. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, Either I mean, they're gonna do that, or like they're gonna like combine it with like you know Mario Land with like Saras Land and have like Daisy or something involved. Mm, that's true. Or or they could do like a, well, they can't really do an origin story as, as I think they're sticking with like the, the 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 Brooklyn thing. So yeah, they're sticking with yeah the show. So they can't do like a like a Yoshi's Island style like thing but i don't know i just know i bet you the second one's gonna be like look here's the cute yoshis <laughs> that's our that's our selling point <laughs> mm-hmm. so, yeah every sequel every every movie sequel now has that like cute character in the sequels <laughs> it's like here's our yeah, selling point <laughs> yeah and they're pretty blatant about it with the toads so they're probably going to do that with like the yoshis or whatever in the next movie yeah Last question, and then we can just kind of just talk about whatever. Uh, what's a fun fact about yourself that your audience may not know? It could be anything. They may be too big. Uh, hmm, that's a... Uh, I don't know. I, I used to play uh, trumpet when I was a kid. There you I guess go. that's something. I have musical background, I guess. That's probably why I like, you know, rhythm games can keep somewhat of a beat, I guess. Mm-hmm playing trumpet you play ska <laughs> uh i i did like you know look online for um you know sheet music for like ska songs and for like jazz songs and i did play a little bit 
not very well because those are like really fast and like complex uh, <laughs> compositions. But I don't know. It was fun to challenge myself. I guess. I always think of that guy. Sorry, um, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say. Unfortunately, I don't really play anymore. I still have my trumpet sitting around somewhere. It's probably all corroded and dead, not usable. <laughs> I always think of that guy on YouTube, like uh, I think it's, it's, it's like Scottoon Network, right? He does yeah, like the, yeah. the the covers of Scott of like different songs, and I'm like, man, how do you do that? <laughs> mm -hmm. He's really good. Yeah, <laughs> always watch those. I'm like, damn, I wish I had any sort of musical talent. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's my questions. But we still have time to just uh, chit chat. So whatever, whatever you want to talk about, man down to talk about uh sure so um i guess i could ask you a couple of questions myself yeah if you want uh you know how did i think you've already told this but you know what was your i guess initial spark to help you know get you into making youtube content well, I uh, I watched PewDiePie. I'm just kidding. I didn't watch PewDiePie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, my uh, I started doing like sketch comedy before gaming content. Um, so and I, you know, I did sketch comedy for years. We haven't done anything recently, but like, so I guess my my earliest like inspiration was um, a comedy team on YouTube that have been around since I guess before YouTube that are on the website and stuff was F and D films. Um, mm -hmm. They, they had that old video. I don't, I don't remember seeing it. It was just called annoying. And it had like the two kids in the bunk bed and like the one on top was like being annoying. And that was, it. That, that, that was really the video, but like they done like more like sketches and they even did like an indie um, film that like a, they, they like kickstarted um, that they were like my, my, my biggest influence um so that got me into like doing sketch comedy and stuff and trying to make that stuff for youtube and then once i got onto youtube and i started watching videos um no no surprise i've talked about this a ton i've watched cl you know, classic game room and uh, of course i watched avg and stuff too so you know screw attack and stuff and like that really got me into like wanting to make gaming content so you know from there that's kind of where where my spark started i used to watch a lot of screw attack <laughs> and uh yeah it's so yeah. funny you know he did uh you know studying craig's kind of like still doing stuff but and like i i subscribe to him but i don't watch anything that he makes anymore i just kind of like i'm subscribed out of like pity almost because i'm just like i used to love your videos man <laughs> but now when i like listen to him talk i'm just like i don't want to listen to this guy <laughs> yeah that's how i am with a lot of guys that i used to listen to that are still around i i just have them subscribed on my channel but you know i just never really look at their videos yeah i was i listen to a lot of like podcast stuff while i'm working and like i was at work and i saw that the uh he was like hosting because he does like side scroller again you know which like was the old uh screw attack podcast he does like a new version of side scrollers and i was like oh i'll I'll listen in while it's live and i listened to like about like, 10 minutes and i was like nah <laughs> so i was like i'm not oh. gonna listen to this i was like i'll leave it in the past <laughs> yeah yeah some things are best left in the past yeah but yeah that's kind of where I, I i jumped in and you know uh, most of those people aren't around except for avgn he's still around <laughs> the... yeah, yeah. <laughs> doing stuff for some reason, I'm not going to say I, I I don't like his new stuff, but he's still here. <laughs> uh, yeah, his stuff is kind of hard to watch. I don't know. It was it was funny at its time, but I think that we need to just kind of move on from that. And James needs to you know do he, the same. Yeah, it's like every once in a while he'll he'll make a video that I do like think is enjoyable you know that i'll I'll, yeah. I'll watch and i'll be like this is this is good but it still doesn't have like the heart of his old videos you know it just mm -hmm. it, it it just feels like he's like i just got to do this to you know feed my kids <laughs> so yeah that's like, fine but it's, you know i would kind of prefer if he would just you know try to do something that i guess he has more passion about than just you know digging up his old content doing more new stuff yeah um and i'm for a little bit i followed like the 
Cinemassacre like controversy wagon and stuff just like just just to listen in and see what was going on but now it's just devolved into people being like oh man can you believe that he uh he set his camera up this way and not this way or something or like man can you be-? it's like shut up <laughs> it's like you, you have nothing to complain about anymore <laughs> like <laughs> like he's just making videos <laughs> it's just don't watch them <laughs> It was funny though, I uh, but yeah, those are my inspirations for uh, for making my stuff, my YouTube channel. Nice. Uh, yeah. But, uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh. So, um, I guess what other plans you got? You got like, um, you're gonna do like something called. Violence Month or something? Oh my gosh, you know about... Oh yes, and everybody, you're in Violence Month, I forgot. Spoiler, yeah, yeah. Spo- spoiler alert, next Uh-oh. month, next month, April, on the Button Mappers, which is, you know, where I am I'm, I'm, I'm primarily at is the Button Mappers. I, I do stuff on my channel too, uh, but this is, you know, my channel. Um, the Button Mappers, we're doing Violence Month. <laughs> I can't spoil what's going to be in Violence Month, but it's going to be violent. Yeah. And uh, you're going to be there for the for the Game Talk episode so oh yeah yeah that's gonna be interesting <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. i i love doing that's my favorite part about like we've we've leaned into it pretty hard but um on the button mappers we used to do like themed months every once in a while or, or like maybe like every other month we try to do something now it's like every month because they're just stupid fun to do and it's like we're just doing we're pulling out all the stops i think last month we had sp- we had one month that was sports month like we're just like what dumb idea can we make for us for a theme month and then we have to like make content around that and it's like super fun to like limit yourself like that <laughs> so so i think violence month is a funny one but uh yeah at the time of recording this we, we haven't recorded your episode for that so i'll be excited to have you on for violence month and see what what violent game you bring to the table i definitely have a, a few listed out one more silly with violence in it but you know I won't say what it is. You know, it's, it's gonna it's gonna ruin the surprise. You know, is it Animal Crossing? Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> you, you saw right through me. Yeah. Dang. Yes. <laughs> that'd be that'd be sick. <laughs> a violent Animal Crossing game. Yeah. You know, they. I've kind of been playing a game like that. I've been playing. Uh, was it um, Cult, Cult of, of the Lamb or something? Yeah, Cult of the Lamb. I've been playing that a lot recently. And it's basically like, what if Animal Crossing was just kind of fucked up? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's it's been like st- stupidly fun. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, because yeah, like I've heard it. Yeah, I I thought I I've like lost my taste for like those kind of games, you know. And then mm-hmm. I saw that one, and I was like, I'll give it a try. And then like, I, I was like, oh, I just lost my taste for like like safe versions of those kind of games because this game i can like create a cult and like brainwash people and like sacrifice people and stuff i was like this is brilliant <laughs> <laughs> so i've been, been playing that one a lot recently um do you have any like videos or anything in the works anything you're working on uh yeah there was one that i've been meaning to release for like i want to say since last year um in- it was based off of another video that this guy made named uh, Berg Productions. He's another old YouTuber from back in the day that I vaguely remember watching. And um, it's basically just, uh, it's called Gaming from a Generational Perspective. And um, I'm just going to talk about the kind of games that I grew up with as like a kid and a teenager. And it's not really going to be like, I guess, like this uh, documentary style. It's just going to be more, you know, personal, just me talking about the games that i like to play as a kid Ooh, i have a question for you during because you mentioned like your your like edgy phase you know which we all had an edgy phase um so what's the edgiest game you played Ooh, um hmm. uh i guess i'll just go with the boring one and uh I don't know. I kind of want to talk about the other one that I was going to pick because that one I'm going to pick for Violence Month, and I don't want to 
Oh, okay. Do yeah, don't don't spoil it if it's going to be in Violence Month. Stay tuned for Violence uh, Month. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess just like in Fallout, like in those games where you can just like decapitate people, and I mm. would just like turn everybody's body into just like hamburger meat when I first played that game. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. The edgiest game I played during that time. Not even like the edgiest, but like maybe like the dumbest edgy game I played during that time. I mean, I played like a lot of Devil May Cry and stuff, but I wouldn't. I th I still think those are good. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe like fucking Gun Gray or something. I don't. Know. I have no clue. <laughs> oh yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, that one's. That I mean, the classic. guy. The guy literally has a fucking coffin on his back. I mean. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. Yeah. <laughs> the, it, it it's a fun game, but like the the character designs and everything always made me laugh because it's it's literally like if like a thirteen year old made a made it like an anime. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's like someone's life journal from like two thousand and four or something. Yeah, Just like I life in the game. I'm pretty sure I I used to. Like in middle school, like draw like anime characters with like sides and stuff, you know. It's like ooh, <laughs> yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah, I, I've been down that road. <laughs> like, know, like I mentioned <laughs> in those like in one of my videos where I just make comics and I would just like make. First, they were like just goofy. Like I was just messing around with my friend, and we were like, you know, we draw one panel, then I draw the other, or you draw one panel, then I draw the other, and then it became like more and more like dark and edgy and i think like an entire city got nuked Ooh. out of nowhere and it was like all serious and i was like what <laughs> yeah some me, good times me and my friend made one a comic we we would we would um so we did like a a smash bros versus sonic comic this is before brawl so like sonic wasn't in smash yet so we would take the roster of melee and then we would take Sonic characters, which is plenty of Sonic characters, and we would match them up against each other, and like mm. different levels. And I remember, um, because he was responsible for drawing the Smash characters, and I was, and I, and I would do the Sonic characters. And one of the ones that we completed was like Kirby versus Tails, and it was in um the fuck the mansion area from Sonic Heroes, and I like the the spooky mansion. I forget what it's called, but um. I I remember we had the dumbest transformation for Kirby. He like sucked in a skeleton and he became Bone <laughs> Kirby. <laughs> he, he just had like a, a, a like a kind of a cue bone. He had like a skeleton on like a you know, skull like uh -huh. on his head and then he would like smack <laughs> you with like a bone. <laughs> It was like the dumbest. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was like the Hilarious. dumbest. It was like what, like what was cool to uh, to me at like whatever grade I was, like seventh grade or whatever. I was like hell yeah. <laughs> and now I'm like, yeah. man, that's stupid. Like I'd be pissed if I was playing a Kirby game and I saw <laughs> skeleton Kirby <laughs> or something. I'm like, what is this? Uh. <laughs> but uh, it's always funny. I I wish I had like a bunch of my old like sketchbooks and stuff. <laughs> to see <laughs> the yeah, the, I, the cringy shit. Oh yeah, I have a couple of those like, from when I was in like middle school and high school, and they were just terrible. But I I still love them, so that's why I just keep them around. Yeah, back. they're they're fun to look at. I know you shared some in videos. Um, um, I know you were you didn't you? I don't know if you shared it, but I know you're talking about the one where you like. You made like a. I don't want to talk about normal heroes because I can do that forever. But the uh, one where you <laughs> where where you used um, the mech, right? I forgot the next the, the mech's name right now. But you, uh, uh, Glastonbury, right? You used the mech yeah, Glass before the second game was out. I uh, yeah, I don't know. I, actually, I think it was my friend's idea to do that, but mm. I think he made it different. Like it was like this upgraded version of it. It, it just looked like Travis, but like as the Glastonbury, like it was so bad. But, I, but yeah, we we came up with that idea. I don't know if I'm secretly Suda Fifty One or I'm connected to him. Are you secretly Suda Fifty One? <laughs> I, uh, you know what? I wouldn't hate to be him, but no, I'm just me. I just think he has the writing of a edgy teenager, even though he's like a fifty something year old Japanese man, which I applaud him for that. 
Oh yeah, I um, again we can get to the topic and know where he goes because I don't want to talk about that all the time. But um, oh, yeah. I love the the in, in, in the third game they were like, "Where's the Glastonbury?" and it was just like it, 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 it like decomposed for like dark like for dark matter or something. Yeah. I was like, "What a what is so stupid." <laughs> I know. It was just like okay, <laughs> we need to have a Deus Ex Machina literally be the the mech from day or uh ex machina uh, yeah so that was just their explanation i was like what seriously dude you don't get to pilot i don't know i have mixed feelings on no more heroes 3 but we'll talk about that later yeah we won't talk about that right now <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah i just um i just love the his the stupid shit like that <laughs> just like man yeah I, it's awesome. <laughs> I appreciate suda's writing it, it brings me back to like kind of the experimental days of like you know the fifth generation of the playstation 2 the uh mm-hmm. gamecube and xbox where all these just our tours were making these weird games and i'm glad that spirit is still alive and his stuff and squirty stuff as well what's your favorite like weird game from that generation Ooh, that's a tough one um i guess tulip you heard of that Ooh, one? yeah i haven't played it but i've watched stuff on tulip yeah, I got it years ago from GameStop back when they were getting rid of all their their older games to, you know, get the next gen games so they're like selling them for really cheap and I got this for like I want to say 4 or 5 dollars and uh it was a wild ride. <laughs> My it was both frustrating but amazing. Yeah, yeah, I that one always looked interesting. That one looks very <laughs> it always looked kind of off-putting to me cuz just because of like the art style and stuff, but uh mm-hmm. it definitely like I would definitely try it. Um, mine isn't too crazy. If if I had to pick like a crazy one, it's probably like Guitaru Man. But like my my favorite is just Beautiful Joe. I'm a big Beautiful Joe fan. And oh I yeah, definitely. F- fucking love it. I I was actually I have I'm on a quest right now to get the the full well not full I don't think the full show was released but like all the volumes of the DVDs that were released here for the anime and. Um, I was out yesterday with a friend, and we went to a thrift store, and I found the second volume, and I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> holy shit!" <laughs> so I bought the, the 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 second volume of the Beautiful Joe anime on DVD yesterday. <laughs> it, was, it was like a random find. Mm-hmm. Never. Yeah. Yeah, the Beautiful Joe series. Um, I don't know, Capcom. I love them, but they really dropped the ball a lot. Like they're kind of in like the same uh, boat that a lot of a lot of those big companies are in, where they just kind of make what's you know popular and what's safe, and they don't really want to step out of their comfort zones. Like if it's not Resident Evil or uh, Street Fighter, Capcom's not going to bother with it. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it sucks. I can't complain because I'm a big fan of Resident Evil and Monster Hunter. So it's oh, like, yeah, of course, it's yeah. hard for me to complain about it because I'm still getting good games from them. Yeah. But yeah, it's like Beautiful Joe and uh, Okami and like a bunch of different properties and stuff. It's just uh, you know um, Onimusha and stuff. It's just like this stuff isn't going to be touched. <laughs> it's like they're not going to do anything. Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe I'm just entitled, but <laughs> you know, because we were just having banger after banger of games come back or come out back in the day, and now it, there are still good games being made, but it's just kind of few and far between. Which I don't really mind all that much because you know I'm trying to save money. I'm gonna buy the newest thing when it comes out. Yeah. Do you, do you think it's just like the the like production cost is like holding them back from wanting to do? I mean, because they did like Devil May Cry Five, and that was I think I think that was a bit of a risky venture for them. In some sense. Uh, I, I I guess I think yeah, especially with you know them going digital with games nowadays. I don't think they're gonna be you know wanting to risk producing all these uh, discs of a game that only two people will buy. It's so expensive. To make Did that Ghosts and Goblins one, right? I, I didn't play it, but the Resurrection game? I've heard of it. I haven't played it either. It looks it looks alright enough. Yeah. <laughs> it looked fine. <laughs> uh, I was just... Mm-hmm. I, I don't know it like it, it just looked like ghost and goblins to, again and i was like well i don't know yeah. if i want that <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's cool yeah but i guess it's good that they're releasing a lot of these older games because you know 
rather than having them just stay dead on whatever console they were for, that they, you know, get a re-release or something. So yeah, that's all yeah. right. What's some uh do you have like some Capcom games you want them to see? You know, you want to see re-released? Uh I don't know if they re-released this or not, but I think it was a game called Red Earth. I think yeah, that's like the yeah, game. they they just did that one on that uh the like the fighting collection thing they did. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So that one's out. Um Hmm, I guess like, you know, the Cyberbots games or like the the ones like the mech beat 'em up games. Let's see more re releases of those. Yeah. Plasma Sword. <laughs> oh, that's For a good one. Dreamcast, yeah. Yeah. Dreamcast. yeah. Or um this I mean or of course, you know, was it uh, Rival Schools or whatever it is? Those those oh, yeah. I know those get a lot of like attention from fans. Like they're not gonna do anything with those. Um you know what I want to see come back or like get a re release at least is the the two Maximo games for PS2. Oh yes, I always wanted to play those games. I never got around to playing them as a kid because I don't know I was just playing whatever. Uh, it's probably some garbage license game, but I I always wanted to play those. Yeah, it's fun. They'd be a fun one to see like a little collection for. You know, we're, we're they're kind of getting there. I mean, they're doing like. They're they're almost at a point to where like all the mega all the old Mega Mans are like in the you know the the modern era like they're doing like the Battle Network ones now. So it's like maybe maybe they'll run out of Mega Man games and then I'll have to start doing some other <laughs> stuff because <laughs> like yeah. after that it's like the the Legends games and then they're out. <laughs> so or Star oh, Force or like, yeah. yeah. So maybe they'll run out of Mega Man. <laughs> they'll be like, "Oh shit, uh, I don't know what do we have." <laughs> so, mm. and I also think it's like because you, you you know there for a little bit they were like trying to do, like uh, appeal to like a Western audience with a lot of stuff. So like they did like the Lost Planet three, uh, Dark Void, the fucking Bionic Commando game and stuff mm -hmm. and that kind of bit him in the ass so <laughs> i also think they're kind of scared <laughs> to do anything <laughs> with like properties like that you know, yeah, I, don't, I don't blame them because like i said before you know it's kind of a risk yeah it's risky it's risky out there man yeah, um, risky business <laughs> <laughs> but uh I don't know. It's just nice to talk to you, man. I haven't talked to you in a while, anyway. You know, other yeah, than, like, I know. The, the text here yeah. and there. Yeah, you're a cool guy. It's just like I don't know. It's I'm kind of a, a bit of an introvert. I guess who isn't nowadays? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I just kind of stay on my own lane. I feel it. I feel it. I uh, the the job that I currently do, I I love it because I have to talk to basically nobody <laughs> the entire day. <laughs> Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, I uh, maybe in the morning for like a second, and then like the rest of my day, I don't gotta talk to anybody. <laughs> just like I listen to podcasts and I'm just doing my thing, <laughs> and that's my day. So uh, I totally get it, man. Uh, but it's nice to catch up with you, you know, and uh, do a little interview here. Like I said, I am gonna put a link to your channel in the description for people that if you aren't uh subscribed to dzd's channel and you are subscribed to me go over there and check them out um also i i think it's still like my big video when you first go to my channel but we did that no more heroes top 10 a couple years ago <laughs> and that's still on the channel oh <laughs> wow nice <laughs> yeah i haven't changed well i haven't like made any of the big videos right now so i haven't changed it so it's it's still like my like when you first click on the yeah. channel it's like this is the top 10 no more here which is kind of out of date now because three is out <laughs> so yeah. uh that'll be that, that'd be a fun one to update at some point oh yeah definitely but uh anyway man it was nice talking to you um anything you want to say to yeah. the audience before we go uh you know you guys keep being awesome um you know if you have the desire to make content you know go ahead try it if you yeah. want to hear hear more from yeah. d he will be in violence month <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's gonna get violent right we'll be talking about 
violence. Now, question before we go: Whenever your avatar, whenever he he bleeds, is it also red? Because he's he's red. Is it just like Ooh, red? That's a, that's a good question. I haven't thought of that. I am not that clever. <laughs> um, maybe it's like uh, you know, the virtual boy only sees like red and black. So maybe it would have been it's just black, like black blood. So, you know, so that ties that back is, into edgy. That's yeah, there we edgy, go. dude. That is edgy as fuck. <laughs> Uh, that is way too edgy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could uh, I could see myself now drawing like a comic and like my notebook and being like, oh I bleed black blood. <laughs> or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. I would I would love to like make a a a new edgy comic like in the style of like a middle schooler's uh, notebook. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I still sometimes will draw like little comics or just like sketch. Yeah. Especially since I've been getting into tabletop and uh, I've been incorporating some of the, uh... cause my friend like that I grew up with that made the comics is now the DM. So we've been trying to like incorporate some of those ideas into like the story. Oh, okay. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see. Well, uh, I'm going to end the recording. So, uh, All right. Bye, everybody. Goodbye.